Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Alpha Omega. This series goes over a brief history of the past and present locomotives with the lowest number, and then those with the highest number. Today we'll be focusing on our first Canadian Class 1 Railroad in the series, Canadian National. After much research, there will be a series record of 4 Alphas and 4 Omegas, with some engines having more known info than others. So without further ado, here's the history of the first CN Alpha. To start off this episode, this locomotive has achieved a bit of a record in the series in which it includes a number that's lower than the number 1. Canadian National Number 0, or Quadruple Zero, was built in a batch of 54 SW900 locomotives ordered by Canadian National in 1958 and was originally numbered 7254. As switching locomotives, with their name literally meaning switching work engine with 900 horsepower, these engines could be found in major freight yards across Canada putting together larger freight trains for CN, with 7254 being stationed at Transcona Yard in the Winnipeg region. This SW900 would primarily be utilized for hump service and flat yard switching, and was also reclassified as a GY900, or Goat Yard 900. Throughout its career, the engine would be renumbered to 7601, then the 401, and finally to the alpha record setting quadruple zero, as well as MP1, as it became the shop switcher for the Transcona Yard, until its retirement supposedly in the mid-2000s. Quadruple Zero was then listed for sale by the Class 1, where it was later acquired by a steel mill company in Manitoba named Gerdu Ameristeel a few years later, where it was renumbered to 1456, and presumably still works to this day. Even if there is relatively little info on the engine itself, Quadruple Zero is still a perfect addition to this episode, as the lowest number on the railroad's all-time roster, and in this series. Now the next three alphas are on the present day Canadian National Active Roster, but all perform different services and have different levels of recognition as revenue locomotives or CN. The first of these three, and currently the lowest of the bunch, is for a pasture rare which CN owns, Algoma Central 104. Of course, being an F40 PHR, this locomotive first saw service for Amtrak as the F40 class of engines replaced many of the aging diesels on the only remaining pasture class 1 and became an icon in American railroading due to their reliability. The engine of discussion, specifically number 242, was built towards the beginning of the batch in October 1977, immediately after another F40 PHR which was mentioned on this channel, as it could be found on a variety of long distance and air city trains alike throughout the entire Amtrak system, including the brief lease by Union Pacific for freight service. Then in 2001, 242 along with engines 283 and 289 were acquired by the Ansco New Ski Train where they were painted into a classic black, silver, and yellow Rio Grande paint scheme with the Rio Grande logo on its front and the word Ski Train on its side. Here the three F40s would lead an assortment of 14 Rio Grande ex-Canadian national coaches between Denver and Fraser, Colorado, pulling skiers from the capital city of Colorado to the nearby Winter Park in the winter months, continuing the seasonal tradition of the Rio Grande Railroad with mighty F40s. However, this Rio Grande tradition would temporarily cease in 2009, when Ansco ceased ski train operations due to rising costs, and all of the railroad stock, including 242, was sold to another tourist railroad, the Agobah Canyon Tour Train. Also known as the Algoma Central Railway, this line was a subsidiary of Canadian National, but the former ski train stock was given CN reporting marks as the locomotives and coaches were repainted three years later into a maroon and silver livery was 242 being renumbered to 104 with the CN logo right above its number on the cap. Today, 104 can be found pulling the Agawa Canyon Tour Train along with F40s 105 and 106 in the remote regions of Ontario as a rare example of a pasture locomotive owned by a Class 1 freight railroad. The story of this F40 and pasture service for a freight railroad may be fascinating, but some of you may not find Algoma Central part of CN or its own railroad, especially after the 2021 sale of the railroad to Watco and therefore not an alpha for CN. With that in mind, the next alpha on the CN active roster would go to RDC Inspection Car 1501. As the lowest number engine currently on CN's roster, that was always owned by the Canadian Class 1, and quite possibly the oldest rail car on CN's current roster, this RDC was initially built in a class of 9 RDC-1s for inner city service in Canada's corridor. The rail car in focus was the last RDC-1 to be built in 1958, number D108, as it could be found running on branch lines throughout the Canadian national system until being renumbered to 6108 in 1969, 
and was then acquired by Via Rail nine years later for service on a smaller number of intercity routes. Eventually, the RDC was retired and stored in 1990 with an uncertain future, with some RDCs being sold to tourist railroads or scrap dealers, but the rail car was reacquired by its original owner, Canadian National, to be rebuilt into a track geometry car in 2007. This news shocks the world as a freight rail reacquiring its own passenger stock is virtually unheard of in railroading history, but nevertheless the now larger Class 1 moved the car to Gateway Rail Services near St. Louis, where it eventually emerged with Mars lights and the latest track testing technology as CN number 15016. However, the 6 in the number was dropped since the computer system only recognized engines with 4 digits, so the new inspection car was promptly renumbered down to 1501 thus moving this rail car status from Ultimate Omega to Ultimate Alpha on the current roster. Since its rebuild, 1501 has been touring the expansive CN system across North America, including its Americas trackage such as the former Illinois Central and Wisconsin Central through recent acquisitions, as its interesting story makes this rail car a great addition to the Canadian national roster as both an Alpha and Omega. The story of this RDC and inspection service by a Class 1 is very interesting, but some of you may not consider an inspection vehicle to be a worthy candidate for an Alpha for this video. In that case, the next Alpha down the list, which is a revenue freight service for Canadian National, would be SD38-2 number 1650. This engine was one of only four locomotives ordered by the Northern Alberta Railways, and one of only eight SD38-2s to be built by GMD, the Canadian division of EMD, as it was the first of the four cheaper and slightly weaker special duty locomotives to be delivered to the small Alberta short line in December 1975 as their number 401. The railroad also continued their locomotive naming tradition as they named their SD38-2s after rivers in Alberta, with 401 being named Peace River, until the railroad was acquired by Canadian National in 1981. Here, the four SD38s were renumbered to 5700 to 5703, were renumbered again in 1996 to 1650 to 1653 to make room for newer locomotives. Nowadays, 1650 continues to serve its home region of the rural branch lines in Alberta and Saskatchewan, and although photos of these XNAR diesels are scarce, it is assumed that they are still in service for CN to this day, diligently serving the scarcest regions of Canada. That now makes a grand total of four alphas in this episode, so might as well move on to the first omega of this Canadian Class 1. Much better photographed is CN GP40-2LW number 9677, which started its career as Go Transit 710, as the new Toronto commuter era was becoming popular and growing fast, and therefore needed more locomotives. 710 was the last of 11 GP40 wide cab variants built for Go Transit in October 1975, and it was occasionally leased by Canadian Pacific for weekend freight service to nearby cities before the weekday morning runs. Another point to note is that these engines did not have head and power, or HEP, so the GP40s were always paired with an APCU which did provide HEP, with one of these engines being mentioned on another video on this channel. Eventually, the GP40-2LWs were replaced by newer F59PHs as 10 of the 11 GP40s were sold to Canadian National in 1991 for local freight service, a somewhat common fate for passenger engines with a freight locomotive basis. Here, the 10 engines were renumbered 9668 to 9677, but somehow 9677 lost its front CN logo sometime in the early 2000s. Nevertheless, this engine continues to serve smaller branch lines in the densely populated regions of Canada, as this engine continues to work for Canadian National as the highest number engine on the railroad's current roster. The next Omega is not well known, and is technically a rail car instead of a locomotive. This is none other than CN10900, which runs along the Calham Shuttle on former BC Rail trackage between Lillooet and Darcy, BC. When the Rural Railroad decided to end its passenger service with aging RDCs instead of purchasing new equipment, they determined that the region between the two aforementioned towns were rail dependent, or had no connection via safe roads, so BC Rail agreed to implement a 30 mile shuttle service specifically between the rail dependent towns, instead of continuing passenger service on the full 466 miles from Vancouver to Prince George. Instead of purchasing coaches or multiple units, the railroad instead purchased two Fairmont Tamper Class A8 speeder maintenance cars built by Jim Busby in California, which carried 20 people each and were initially intended for a canceled tourist service in the same state they were rebuilt. The two rail cars were numbered TU-108 and TU-109, since the last speeder on BC Rail was numbered TU-107, and after modifications to meet BC Rail standards, 
They entered service immediately after the last run of the Caribou Prospector on November 1, 2002, only running between the rail-dependent towns. Once in service on the Calhoun Shuttle, with Calhoun meeting to meet the train in Middlewet language, they were nicknamed the Mini Buds and Bud Lights, as they transported residents and tourists alike along the route. Thankfully, when Canadian National acquired, or leased BC Rail in 2004, they continued service and modified the two rail cars by making them taller and added more safety features as their BC Rail logo was replaced with CN, and they were renumbered to 10800 and 10900, thus changing their status from Ultimate Alpha to Ultimate Omega on the active roster. Since then, these two heavily modified speeders continue to run on the isolated region, either in a pair or separately, as they continue Canadian National's only current passenger operation as Ultimate Omegas in one of the best kept secrets of the nation. Now considering that Canadian National has existed for over a hundred years, the last two Omegas to be covered in this episode go all the way back to the early years of the railroad, which followed the 15,000 tradition of railcars for CN. For this episode, these two Omegas are Baggage Railcar 15844 and Motor Railcar 15953. The first of these two is based on the ED-74N, the last of many doodlebugs which were utilized for branch line services on mixed trains in order to free up more locomotives and passenger cars, but this engine along with its sister engine, 15843, were built in April 1931 as baggage-only rail cars. Instead of carrying both passengers and freight, like most other doodlebugs at the time, these two only carried freight as they were built with two baggage doors, essentially making them self-propelled baggage cars instead of the usual combine cars. Other than its diagram, only one photo of 15844 is known to exist, and it is reported that the rail car was later converted into auxiliary cable car 59328, where it was presumably unpowered and later scrapped. Finally, the last and truly ultimate Omega number 15953 is even more unusual than a self-propelled baggage car, in which it was an experimental road railer bus. In an attempt for the road railer company to enter passenger service with the rise of both streamliners and highways, Evans produced three auto railer passenger cars to be trialed on CN in 1937 after a few attempts with different designs on other railroads. Although no known images exist of the rail car itself, only one known image seems to exist of its sister engine as a baggage car. However, these tests weren't successful and they had their rail wheels removed only a year later due to mechanical problems as they were converted into buses. Although sources state that the other two units were sold to CN and Laird Oshawa Railways buses, they do not directly state what happened to number 15953. So the fate of this Ultimate Omega is likely a mystery, but still a noteworthy addition to the incredibly expansive roster of Canadian National Railway. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Alpha Omega. This will probably be the longest or most involved episode of the series since I had to research a total of 8 locomotives on the all-time CN roster, ranging from common rope freight locomotives with unusual backgrounds to obscure railcars serving remote regions in Canada. The reason why I had to review so many engines in this one video is that there are claims that could question each engine's status as an Alpha or Omega, so I had to cover each one in order to be as accurate and complete as possible. Thank you again for watching, credit for all the photos used go to their respective photographers, and stay tuned next time for the next Canadian Railroad, which is the rivaling Canadian Pacific. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Have a good day.